Oh, shit! I don't really want to make this video. Not really. I didn't get on YouTube to be a Sonic Tuber. Sonic Tubers fucking suck. They are horrible, opinionated, nasty little men. But I've been seeing far too much of this nonsense and I just feel like I've got to say something. Everyone knows that the Sonic fandom is a shit show of a fandom with many problems from many different eras, but the biggest problem the fandom has now is nostalgia and people who hold nostalgia on too high of a pedestal. People who hold older nostalgic elements of the series in such a high regard that they refuse to let them go. And I have found in my experience, which is about 20 years or so now, that the biggest of the nostalgic issues come from the American side of the fandom. And a good amount of it is down to cultural issues that America has in general, such as the idea that anything American is inherently better than everything else, and the incorrect belief that the way things are experienced in America is the way that they are experienced to the rest of the world. Now, I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm here to talk about silly blue hedgehogs. But those beliefs skew the way the American side of the fandoms see Sonic in one particular damaging way. And that is the importance of the supplementary material. Comics and the TV shows. The American side of the fandom has this perception that growing up, watching the Sonic cartoons and reading the Sonic Archie comic is a universal experience. It's not at all. America only makes up about 50% of Sonic's overall commercial success. So that's only around half the fandom who read these comics, only around half the fandom that saw these cartoons. In other places where Sonic games are or were commercially sold, these cartoons did not play on television. These comic books were not sold in shops. In fact, for pretty much exclusively the entirety of its run, the Archie comic book was only sold exclusively in America and only really reaching overseas sales when digital distribution started becoming more popular. And of course, the other thing to remember about comic books especially is that they've not always been that popular especially outside of America. You have to remember, it wasn't all that long ago when Marvel, the biggest comic distributor today, was dangerously on the verge of bankruptcy and had to be saved by Disney. Comic books were not held in high regard for the longest time. Not everything was like we have with the days of the MCU where comic books are mainstream popularity. It was a niche hobby. And even in places outside of America, we didn't have the Sonic comic, as I mentioned. Like, even in Britain, we had a Sonic comic, but it wasn't the Archie Sonic comic. And even then, it wasn't comparable to the popularity of things like Marvel or DC, over here, our popular comics were The Beano, The Dandy, and 2000 AD. 
fuck you're old. One of the things I saw is this idea that it is because of the comics that Sonic continued to have success. But again, we're talking about only half the fandom, around 50% of it. There's a whole other 50% of it that were enjoying this franchise, buying it, making Sega that money, without having read a single page of it. In the grand scheme, this supplementary material really was not that important. It wasn't important enough to be fully distributed like the main games were. And these comics and cartoons not being experienced by 50% of the fandom means in turn certain characters who are often touted as being important central characters are really not that important. And I think you know who I'm talking about. They're not whole freedom fighters and the rest of the mob that came along in the Archie comic. Look, this isn't going to be another hit piece or character assassination or whatever you want to call it about Sally Acorn or whoever else that you want to think that I don't like because it is a fact that these characters are not that important. The evidence is the 30 years of video games that did not include them. Piss off! Mm. This is 30 years of potentially never knowing who these apparently extremely important characters are. Now, I understand they may be important in your hearts and in your minds, but in the grand scheme of Sonic's success or Sonic's narrative, they aren't. If they truly were that important, they would have been in the games at some point. In fact, Sonic Forces, the plot of that game, was Sonic and a band of freedom fighters going to war against Eggman after he had taken over the world. If there was ever going to be a point where the Knothole crew were introduced, that would have been the game to do it. And they didn't. We got generic soldiers and your OC as characters. Your original character made it into a Sonic game canon before the Freedom Fighters did. And then there's the people who are campaigning, or rather moaning, hoping that they will come back. They're under the idea that they're being neglected because of the comic book that these characters belong to no longer existing. And they think they're being hard done by now. But here's the thing, as time goes on, there's going to be more and more new Sonic fans. People who are just getting their start. People who will be introduced through the series through Forces or Frontiers or the IDW comic. People who will never know who Sally or Bunny or Mina or Scourge, who any of those were. And it's not a case of being able to electively ignore them like it is now. It'll be a case of they won't know who they are because they literally were not around for them. If these characters were so important, would they be allowed to fade away like this? 
This isn't some cruel, purposeful knock against your favourite character. This is just the nature of how franchises evolve. Some characters stay and get to evolve further. Others get left behind and forgotten. There is going to come a point in time, long after we're all gone, that nobody is going to know who Sally Acorn is anymore. There's going to be nobody left to keep crying and rallying for Sally. And that's okay. You need to come to terms with this and let them go. It's what's best for the franchise, it's what's best for the fandom, and it's what's best for you. It's okay to still be a fan of these characters, but the way I see some people cling on to them and make them their whole identity, it's unhealthy, concerningly so. And now for the part you really didn't see coming. In spite of everything that I have said, I am not against the idea of the Knothole crew being brought forward into Mom Cannon. They can easily be reworked into a way that fits with modern Sonic Cannon because they already did it in the post Genesis wave Archie run. They could work, even in a game setting, if done correctly. Sonic's world is separated into different islands. Go to a new island we haven't seen before. Let's call it Knothole Island. Eggman's causing trouble there. Sonic and Pals go over to stop him. They come across a band of locals. They team up. They part on amicable terms. They can come back later at some point. And the characters do have potential as playable characters. Sally's wrist blades are a potential game mechanic. Bunny's telescopic arms are a potential game mechanic. Anton's sword play is a potential game mechanic. Rotors. Nicole's ability to interact with computer interfaces is a potential game mechanic. It's something that they could do, but they're not. It's blatantly obvious with each passing year that they're just not. And it's something that people need to come to terms with. The way that people continue to go about demanding these characters and people starting fights with each other no matter what side they're on. It's awful. And it's been like that forever. And because of the way that this divided fandom keeps fighting with each other, taking away the thing that causes the issue, is for the best. The franchise will survive without these elements. Do you know how I know? Because it already has. Good night out there, whatever you are.